All right, guys, so on this week's field tip, we're gonna be using an arrow test kit to find the perfect arrow for this new bow. So a couple of months ago, I put out a very detailed video on tuning where we talked about theory and tuning. We talked a lot about why you're seeing the different results when you shoot an arrow that's underspined or overspined. We talked about influences of tip weight, arrow length, uh, static spine versus dynamic spine, uh, bear shaft tuning, all of that stuff. And so if you're new to tuning, uh, I would highly recommend that you watch that video and so you'll have a basic understanding of how all that stuff works together. For this video, we're going to be talking about finding an arrow and tuning an arrow to a specific length. So in the other arrow, or in the other video, we talked about shortening the arrow to find that, to, to, to get to the point where you have an arrow that flies well. But there may be, um, you may have a specific arrow length that you want to shoot. And you might want to do that for a couple of different reasons. One reason is that if you're a gap shooter, and you don't, and you have an arrow of a specific length that you want because changing that arrow length changes your gaps. And basically, if you change your arrow length, you have to relearn how to shoot that bow and arrow, which is not very convenient. And so you might have an arrow of a specific length that you want to shoot from that bow. This is what that video is about. So what we're gonna do, I just made this bow. This is a 60 inch or 62 inch overall. Uh, it's about 58 pounds at 28 and a half inches. I don't know what this bow is going to like. I don't know which one of these arrows is going to shoot perfectly out of this bow. And so I've got a test kit here. It goes all the way from 45 to 50 spine range, all the way up to 70, 75. And I think somewhere in here, I know somewhere in here is going to be an arrow spine range that this bow likes at this particular length. I've got all of these trimmed. They're all the same length and I've got them trimmed just long enough so that when I come to full draw, if I have a broadhead on here, when I come to full draw and expand just a wee bit, that broadhead will touch my knuckle. That lets me know I'm at the same draw length every time. And it also acts as a psycho trigger the same way that a clicker would to let me know that I am at that point where I want to release that arrow. So we're gonna start shooting down here on these lower spine ranges and we're gonna work our way up through these, uh, this spine range. And what you're gonna see is how this, the spine or the stiffness of the arrow influences how these arrows fly out of this bow. So we're gonna start down here at the 45 to 50 spine range. And what you're gonna see is a very significant tail left as this arrow flies down range. And that is a, a weak spine indication. As we move up to the 50-55, it starts to correct itself. The 55 to 60 is doing pretty well. It's still a little bit underspined. As we move up to the 60-65, you can see that these are just slightly overspined. Now we move up to the 65 to 70 and the 70, 75, and you're gonna see that these are way over spine. All right, so as we went through this arrow test kit and shot each spine range, we could see how that was changing. And what we found is the, 55, the black arrows here, the 55, 60s, are just slightly under spine and the 60-65s are slightly overspined. And so we need to find a way to take one of these groups of arrows, one of these spine ranges, and make them fly, fly perfectly out of this bow. Now there's a couple of ways that we could go. We could go with the underspined arrows, the 55-60s, and we could drop down in tip weight. So right now, these are 160 grain tips. All of these arrows have 160 grain tips. If I took the 160 grains off and went with a 145 or maybe even need to go with a 125, I could make these arrows fly well out of this bow. 
or we could go with the slightly over spined arrows and go up in tip weight. And so right now, as I said, these are 160s. If I went with, if I took these off, put 190s on there, again, I could make these arrows fly perfectly out of this bow. Now, which way you go, it's up to you. If you up your tip weight, go with the higher spine, uh, you're gonna end up with a little bit higher total arrow weight, which if you're bow hunting, uh, could be a great thing. If you're more of a target archer and you're looking for a flatter trajectory, maybe you wanna drop down and, in your tip weight and make these lower spined arrows fly well. Again, it's up to you, whatever works best for your application. So this arrow test kit is pretty expansive. I've, got, I've actually got more spine ranges than I have right here. Uh, I've got a 40 to 45 and then I've got a 75 to 80 and I think I've got an 80 to 85. Now to do this, to, to find uh, the right arrow for your bow, you don't need an arrow test kit that's this expansive. The only reason that I was shooting these real uh, low spine and real high spine out of this bow is to just to show you uh, the influences that spine range has on your arrow flight. All you really need is uh, three or four different spine ranges to find that perfect one. The reason I have such an extensive um, arrow test kit is because I build a lot of different bows. I give bow building classes. I have students come out. They have different draw lengths. They want different uh, draw weights uh, in their bows. And so I need something that has a large span in my arrow test kit so that we can find arrows that fly well out of the bows that the students make. Now, for uh, if you are just uh, working and trying to find something that's going to fly well for you, all you really need is uh, maybe three different spine ranges of arrows, three or four different spine ranges of arrows. Now this arrow test kit came from Andy Ponce with Addictive Archery. Uh, you can get them from him, you can get them from Three Rivers, uh, you can make your own. It doesn't matter as long as you have some different spine ranges, well-made arrows. So if you're just gonna have a couple of different spine groups that you're gonna be testing with your bow, you need to have an idea of the, just the general ballpark where you're gonna be. You know, are you gonna be down towards the low end or are you gonna be uh, up towards the high end uh, for the bow that you're shooting? And probably the best way that I can tell you to figure out what range of spine groups you need to order is just to get on the Three Rivers website and on there they've got an, a spine chart that takes into account uh, the type of bow you're shooting, your draw length, uh, your tip weight, uh, what type of arrow you're shooting, and it gives you kind of a, a general ballpark. Now I wouldn't use that uh, as a, as a um, end all be all and just order, you know, spend 150 bucks or whatever on custom arrows based on that spine chart. I, I would not do that at all. Uh, you're probably going to be disappointed. But what it is useful for is just getting you in the ballpark where you'll know what kind of test arrows to order. You know, go to that, find what it recommends, then order some above and some below and some right in the middle. And something in there is going to work, especially when you start manipulating uh, your tip weights along with that, those different spine ranges. So in the tuning video that I'd mentioned previously, I show how I use slow motion video to help me tune my arrows by getting my wife to stand up on a platform behind me and shoot directly over the top of me so that I can read the left and right arrow flight. Now, I had uh, one of my Patreon subscribers, Jacob Reynolds, send me some footage of him doing that uh, with a camera behind him, slow motion video, and he was just needing some help on tuning. The problem was that the camera angle was off a little bit and so I had to have him redo it. And, and so if you're going to do it this way, if you're going to use slow motion video, it's very important that that camera be directly over the top of that arrow or directly behind that arrow flight so that you can read that left and right arrow flight. If it's off just a little bit to the right or the left, it makes it very difficult to read that arrow flight. So uh, like I said, if you're going to use that method, make sure that that camera is directly over. All right, guys, so that's going to wrap it up for this week. Now, in a future video, 
I'm gonna be producing a much more comprehensive guide to selecting the perfect arrow for your recurve, your longbow, selfbow, whatever it is that you're shooting. So if you're not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do that. Hit that little bell icon so that you get a notification when I upload those new videos. And with that, we'll see you next time.